guys, today we are going to learn about sequential circuits. Sequential circuits are circuits which have memory and the answer is a function of its own inputs and time. The topics that you are going to learn today are going to be registers, latches, flip-flops and how to create test benches with them. I hope you guys like it. If you have any other doubts or comments, please let me know and uh, let's start. So, let's talk a little bit now about, about sequential circuits. The main characteristics of sequential circuits is that they have memory and stuff happens based on a clock. Okay? Uh, this, the most common circuits that are sequential are flip-flop disks, latches, registers, RAMs, fi finite state machines and FIFOs. Okay? The, the basic structure to create sequential circuits in Verilog is to use the sequential always. You use always at some criteria, okay? This criteria is called the sensitivity list. And uh, every assignment inside is always you need to use the non-blocking assignment. In future videos, I'm going to show the difference between the uh, non-blocking assignment and the blocking assignment. Basically, sequential circuits use the non-blocking assignments and use this as a rule, okay? Inside the sensitivity list, you can see uh, signals that are going to be based in the rising edge of the clock. So we use pose edge clock. In the falling, falling edge of the clock, mag edge the clock. Okay? Or if you use an asynchronous reset, you're going to be pose edge clock or pose edge or mag edge uh, reset. Okay? Uh, again, the sensitivity list will make the always block execute. So, if you put here in the criteria pose edge clock, this always block will execute every time that the rising edge of the clock arrives. Here I just draw a little bit how is the rising edge of a clock. It's the moment that the clock goes from zero to high. And the falling edge, the moment that the clock goes from one to zero. Okay? Now I'm going to talk a little bit more about uh, flip-flops and latches. And uh, let's go. Okay guys, this is the latch. The latch is the base of every sequential circuit, okay? This is a latch made of NOR gates. Just to help us out to understand the circuit, I put in the truth table of the NOR, okay? One point that we need to remember is if any of the inputs of the NOR is 1, the output will be 0, okay? For instance, here, 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 it's always going to be 0, okay? So, uh, this is the latch. The latch has just one condition that Q and Q bar need always to be uh, inverted in between each other, okay? So, let's start the, uh, looking at the circuit. If we put R equals 1 and S equals 0, what will happen? As we said, if any of the signals is, has 1, the output will be 0. And in this case, if this is 0, the 0 will come here, and 0 with 0 is 1. Okay? Now, in a second time, if R goes to 0 and S is staying 0. Okay? Now, R is 0, S is 0. In this case, uh, R here is 0. The signal that was before here is 1. Okay? So, 0 and 1 will be 0, so this state is maintained, okay? And here, here, 0 and 0 will be 1. So, in this condition here, the output Q and Q bar is maintained. This is a memory. This is the point where the, the large circuit is a 1-bit memory, okay? Now, let's go to the case where we put R equals 0 and S equals 1, okay? If we put S now to 1, Q bar will be 0, okay? And now 0 and 0 will be 1. So, Q will be 1. So, in this case, and in this case here, if you put R equals 1, Q will be 0. If you put S equals 1, Q will be 1, okay? So, this guys here are the setup part of the of the latch. Fourth case, what would happen if we put R equals 1 and S equals 1? As we see, if we if any of the inputs of the NOR gates are 1, 
the output will be forced to be zero. Okay? The problem is that this breaks our first condition that Q and Q bar should be different, which in this case is not. And the other point is this can create a race condition which can make our latch uh, oscillate and lock into an unknown state. In the case of the latch, always avoid to R and S to be one. This is a forbidden condition. Okay? So now let's go to the to what we can do to this latch to make it become a flip-flop D. Okay? Okay guys. Now the first modification that we did in our latch is to add this circuit here first to avoid the, uh, the forbidden condition okay so in this case here the R1 and R and S will never be one okay we put here this, uh, this not gate to avoid this and we add another two set of N gates that are going to be our enable okay in this case here if, if in the enable we put a clock okay Every time that the clock will be at 1, the latch will work. If the clock is at 0, it, it will not memorize. Okay? So, again, while the clock is at the own state, not rising edge, own state, the, the, the latch, okay, the, now the flip, the latch D will work as expected. The only difference is that now we can memorize D as being 1 or 0 while the enable signal is high or the clock is high okay but this by the way is still not our flip flop d because this the this latch d will be transparent like say like this while the the clock is at the positive state okay the flip flop d will work only in the rising edge of the clock so we're going to do another modification to make this uh, this become a flip flop d but before that, we're going to step, uh, step back a little bit to show that uh, how we can detect a uh, rising or falling edge with digital circuits, okay? Before we go to our second modification to transform a latch type D into a flip-flop D, we're going to show how to detect a rising edge, okay? The rising edge detector is quite simple and deals with the gate delay. So, let's take a look. Uh, here, if we have a signal A, okay, followed by three, uh, by three inverters, okay. At this point, you get you're going to have A inverted. At this point, you're going to have A again, and then in this point again, you're going to get A inverted, and let's call it this B, okay. If you take a look, in this case, due to our physical properties of our gates, they are not time zero response. There is always a delay. Okay, in this case, B or A inverted will be an inverted delayed version of A. Okay, so at this teeny, teeny, teeny space of moment here, that is our, uh, our gate delay, okay, A and B will be equal. Okay, and in this point, if you put an, an end gate, okay, here is the truth table of the end gate, at this very, very tiny, teeny space of time, this circuit will be will be one. The output of this circuit will be one. And now, if we bring back this rising edge detector to our latch uh, latch D, we're going to have a flip flop. So I, I'm going to show in the in the board how is the circuit of the flip flop D. Okay, guys, this is our last modification that we're going to add to our latch D to transform into a flip flop D. Okay. The, the only thing that we need to do is to add our uh, to add our post edge detector. Okay, as seen in the uh, in the previous part, into the enable part of our latch D. This will transform into a flip flop D, which means this this whole circuit is going to be enabled only in the rising edge of the clock. If we say this in terms of very log, is this always block here? Is that always with the sensitivity list? Post edge clock, which means this circuit will execute only in the positive edge of the clock. In the positive edge of the clock, the D input will be sampled, okay, and is going to be assigned into Q and QN. Okay. One important thing that we're going to uh, to tackle later in other videos is that here we see 
two lines and two assignments, but these are non-blocking assignments. How this will work? All the assignments will be uh, the right part of the expression is going to be evaluated in the positive edge of the clock, okay? And the, the assignment will be executed all at the same time in the end of the always block, okay? This will, uh, will create the kind of dynamic that happens into a flip-flop D, okay? So, uh, now we're going to see a little bit more about registers and switch to the right. Okay, guys, just to finish this video, we are going to talk about the register, okay? A register is just a bunch of flip-flops. It's a, it's a circuit, okay, that are going to hold a vector of bits, okay? Not only one bit, but a vector of bits, okay? In this case here, we have a 3-bit register, which is based by three flip-flops. All the flip-flops are clocked at the same time, okay? And every part of the bit vector is assigned to one of the uh, one of the inputs of the flip flop, okay. This will, will create a memory uh, of a single element with a three bit vector, okay. Uh, we're going to show with more details how to create this in uh, in the lab part, okay. So guys, this is the last part of the video. Now we're going to switch to the lab, and hope you guys enjoyed. So let's go and do some practical stuff. Okay guys, we're going to start our lab creating our synchronous flip-flop D. Uh, just to remember, the flip-flop D has as an input the clock, the reset, the input D, and the output the, the signal Q. The, this sample we are going to create a synchronous reset flip-flop, which means the only uh, signal in our always block is going to be the clock, and uh, during the rising edge of the clock, we're going to check if the reset pin is on. If the reset pin is on, we're going to set the output Q to zero. So, here we are creating our always sequential block and uh, it is going to execute, the sensitivity list is going to be the, uh, the positive edge of the clock and if reset equals 1, uh, the output Q will be assigned non-blocking to 0 and uh, if not, we are going to sample the input D. Okay, now that your flip-flop D model is done, we're going to create a test bench and uh, this test bench is going to instantiate this model and uh, we're going to add some inputs to, to simulate and see the results in the waveform viewer. Uh, the same uh, technique to infer the inputs of your device under test as register regs variables and the uh, output of your of your dude to wires applies also to to do a test bench to sequential circuits. Uh, here again, reg will be D clock and reset, which are the our inputs, 
and uh, the output Q will be a wire. Okay, the, the only thing that is changed a little bit the, from the test bench of a sequential circuit is that uh, we need to generate the clock signal and uh, we need also to have a previous initial begin uh, block just to set the, the inputs to a known value. Otherwise, the, the simulation result will be with the X value, with the don't care. So uh, this is just the, the, the first point to have attention. And uh, here I just uh, showing off how to change when to change the input. Here we wait the negative edge of the clock to do ch some changes in the in the input, and this will guarantee that the in the moment that the positive edge arise arise the rising edge arise, our inputs are already stabilized. This is a good uh, uh, a very good way to create a test bench for sequential circuits. Okay, now that we put the simulation to run, uh, we're going to analyze a little bit the signals and uh, just to, va uh, to validate that your flip-flop is working, okay? Uh, I, I will just organize a little bit the signals to help us visualize better. Okay, now we can see that uh, in, the f in the first uh, rising edge of the clock that the reset signal is high, our output Q will be set to zero, okay, will be, will be low. And uh, at every rising edge of the clock, our input signal is going to be sampled and uh, the output Q will just uh, receive the input, the input D value, okay. One nice detail to observe is that after the rising clock edge, even if you have a little bit of noise, this noise is not going to be passed out to the uh, to the out output Q. Okay, even after the ri the the rising edge, and also uh, in the rest of the signal before the next rising edge, the we, we simply are going to ignore any noise. Okay, here we can see a little bit better, and uh, now. What we're going to do, we're going to close our simulation and we're going to change our flip-flop D to become a latch. Okay? The latch, as we see in the board, is a circuit that is going to retain the or sample our input while the clock is high. There is a little bit of difference. The flip-flop D is going to sample our input D only in the rising edge. And the latch is going to input our is going to sample our input at the whole time that the clock is high. So we're going to see in the simulation that now we're going to be a little bit less uh, immune to noise. Okay, any noise that happens while the clock is high is going to be passed out to the output. Now let's. Uh, okay, after this is done. Let's run the simulation again and see that the waveform change a little bit more. Okay, now let's just take some room to the waveform. Let's close some windows and organize a little bit the signal just to have a take a look. And uh, now you see that uh, uh, the noise that we have after the rising clock edge is passed out to the output. Okay, I'm just highlighting in red to help you guys to visualize. And uh, basically, this is the main difference. Uh, a latch is less immune to noise than a flip-flop. Okay, this is the, the point that you guys need to remember.
Okay, guys, now to finalize the, the day, we're going to show how to create a register. And uh, imagine a register as a bunch of flip flops connected in parallel. Okay, the clock are going to be in parallel. And uh, we're going to sample each bit of a word that you want to store. So, for instance, if you want to store a bit vector of, for instance, eight bits. You're going to need a register, and inside this register, you're going to have eight flip flop keys. Okay? Here we just put in the input signals, which are reset, clock, write, enable, and uh, input and the output. Okay? And uh, as a flip flop, this is a sequential circuit that is going to execute in the rising edge of the clock. It's completely synchronous circuit. Okay, I'm now I'm just creating the uh, the model file, and uh, let's take out those comments to help us visualize more. By the way, put comments in your model. Huh? This helps a lot. I'm just taking out the the comments here just to show better in the screen. Okay. Ah, nice point. Uh, I'm adding a parameter that is going to control the number of bits that our register is going to have. It's a good practice to always create a model that are as generic as possible. This will allow you to, uh, to avoid having to write one register for every case that you need. Okay, so our bit vector of size 8 go from 7 to 0 and now we're creating our always block, our sequential always block that is going to be executed in the positive edge of the clock. Okay, now I'm going to handle the reset signal. By the way, it's a synchronous reset. And uh, after this, if the reset is not high, I mean, we are not want to reset, we're going to, to check if the write enable is true. And if it is, we're going to, to sample our input. So basically, if write enable is true and we are in the rising clock, we're going to sample our input data. After we finish our model, I'm just going to synthesize, just to show you guys the schematic generated, and uh, just to take a look, and you, go, you guys going to you are going to see that the register is just a bunch of flip flops in parallel. Okay, take a look. That's it. There are just eight flip flops that are going to be connected in parallel. And now let's create our test bench. Uh, we're going just to add the, the test bench sources, the simulation sources, and. Uh, by the way, same structure as every sequential test bench. You're going to define the input and output. You're going uh, later. We're going to instantiate. You're going to define some uh, some first inputs at zero. Otherwise, you're going to have uh, a lot of uh, don't cares and unknowns in your result. Then you create another initial block to add our stimulus. Okay, and this is a test bench. So for while display everything in the Verilog language is accepted now.
Just to save a little bit of time, we're going to copy and paste the, the rest of this bench, which is just a for loop that's going to count from, uh, from 0 to 10, sorry, from 0 to 9. And uh, at every, every time that we increment our counter, we're going to wait for the, uh, for the negative edge of the clock. And uh, we, that's we going to fetch the result of our simulator, and we are going to be able to see what is going on. Okay, guys. So that's it. We're just going to change the the radix of our signals just to put as a decimal to help us to visualize a little bit better. And uh, as you can see, the flip, the, oh sorry, the register is going to be updated at every rising edge of the clock if the right enable is high. Okay? So guys, that's it. Let's finish the day. And uh, next video, we're going to talk a little, a little bit more now about RAMs, uh, single, uh, single port RAM and dual port RAM. And uh, after that, we're going to take a look on FIFOs. Okay? So, see you guys and uh, thanks a lot.